But when I think of hunger, you know, I wonder sometime if, if we have any longing in us for any righteousness. How many of you just, you, you want things right? Couple, come on, come on. I mean right, squared away. Where you want things right. The Bible says, blessed are you when you hunger and thirst for righteousness. I believe in divine dissatisfaction. I think you could, you could have six homes, four vacation resorts, and 20 cars, but there's something in you that wants God. What you want for God has to be the greatest thing in your life. Sometimes God will leave you with a problem till you figure that out. I had a sermon I used to preach. It's not what he takes, it's what he leaves. Because God takes, he delivered you from a lot of things when you got saved, but he leaves some of them. So you remember. He leaves things in your life until he can get something out of your life. I know that doesn't sound very preachy, but Jacob limped a long time after he had an encounter. He limped the rest of his life. Every step Jacob took, he knew he had an encounter with God. And if God delivered you from everything, you would never change. You would stay exactly like you are. Most of us, instead of changing, we learn how to live miserable and comfortable. As long as we can be comfortable, we'll live with the misery of not changing. And we'll take those problems with us the rest of our life. And we'll have that hole, but we'll learn to fill that hole, but we won't change. God makes it so you have to change. I think there's something you have to settle to get into your purpose that the word is absolutely true and everything else is a lower form of truth. You have to settle it in your heart that the Bible is the word of Almighty God, the possessor of heaven and earth, and that it was written through holy men who were men that were imperfect that wrote a perfect book because God fully could articulate through people supernaturally. And it says he watches over his word to perform it he said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Until you can come to the place where what the word says is higher than anything you see on the paper, anything you see in the news, anything you read. I just looked up a word, which I'm not going to get into, but I looked up a word, and they changed the meaning so much I can't use it, and I wasn't near my old dictionary, so I'm not going to give it to you till I go home and look at my, my written dictionary that don't keep tracking me. They changed it, and they're, they're putting new definitions in our life. They've redefined the textbooks in the last 35 or 40 years. They've redesigned. They are fashioning what they want, but they're ignoring this the whole time. And I don't care. I've had people tell me, I don't care what the Bible says. They were Christians. Because this is what I think. I thought, my God. Now, you don't have to say that for that to happen. You just got to act like you don't believe it, and it's the same thing. Interesting. Remember, it says if you commit adultery in your heart, you've already committed adultery. What you, you're living what you really believe right now. Your life is at the level of word level you've accepted. The more the word you can accept, the higher your life gets. But we, we find plateaus where we kind of negotiate with our enemies and make platforms where we think we can stand and have both. But God said you have to choose. You have to sell out. We're just so afraid that it's going to cost us everything that we don't. But remember, whoever tries to keep it loses it. Whoever loses it's the guy that gets it. I'm not telling you this so you get wealth and riches, but I promise you God will make you a whole lot wealthier than you can ever make yourself. I promise you in Jesus' name, I've seen him do it. If you do it without God, it's a tough road. Well, you do it with God, you don't even know why it happens. It starts happening and you're thinking, my God, I'm so blessed, I'm scared. You ever been so blessed, felt so blessed sometime, you think, wow, look what God did for me. You can't tell nobody though because it doesn't work when you tell people. You can only tell a couple. 
God's really, really good. So you have to settle that the Word is final authority in your life, always. What God said is final authority. What you think is always lower. And when you do that, see, when you do that, who has to change? You do. That's the best way to get your character straightened out is try to obey the Scriptures. Because those, those Scriptures, to me, maybe not to you, but to me, they're extremely challenging. And in, in Peter, it says you purify your soul by obeying the truth. That's your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's your soul. So if you have pornographic, pornographic dreams, your obedience to the truth will begin to drive that out of your life. Cold out my shot. If you have anger, if you have things that you can't get a loose from, your obedience to the Word will begin to purify how you, how you think. But if you don't obey, that's why being a hypocrite is so dangerous. It's not being a hypocrite to so people call you one. It's the demonic activity that it's allowed to stay in your life because you are one. The label, the true stone, labels really don't mean that much. You know that. And what people think of you really doesn't mean that much. If I, this, you know what one of my goals is? For you to have a healthy view of yourself. I care more, this sounds funny, I care more about what you think about yourself than what anybody thinks about you, even me. I want you to understand that God is perfectly content being your dad and father, and that you can relax and be yourself. If I didn't do nothing for you with this my whole life, if I could help you with that, you'll be all right, because you're not driven by fears, you're not driven by anxieties, you're not afraid all the time. You get delivered from all those emotional things that torment you that you've learned to live with, because you find out you're loved and God is watching out for you. Amen. I think if you can get people to understand that, they've got some great thing. Because they can relax and explore their life and become what they want to become because they're not driven and afraid. This place is designed for you to be yourself. Now, if you have imaginary performance things that I don't know, I tell people before, they said, you're thinking, I said, no, I'm not. I didn't think of that. You thought of that on your own, and you stuck it on me. I didn't know what I'm thinking. I don't know how you did that. They're saying, are you this at me? And no, I said, I wasn't thinking about that. Because you know how your mind is. It fabricates a lot of things that are not there. You have fights to fight that aren't even there to fight about. Anyway, so your personal belief system will determine how, how well you do. Uh, who are you? You are who you, what you really believe, you know. I'm like, I, this, I hate use, I use somebody else, but I can't because it's too personal. My kids always knew what I believe. The people around me know what I believe. I don't have to tell them because your life says what you really believe. You hear me? If you have to tell them, you're not got, you don't have a good reflection. You shouldn't have to tell them. Somebody should look at your life. See, you are literally, the scripture describes you as a letter of for all men to read. Your, your life, when they look at it, should see there's a God and that you serve him. I think we have turned the world completely off by calling them homosexuals, by calling them sinner names, and doing all of that because our life wasn't strong enough for them to want to ask us what we got. I didn't say that all that isn't true. I'm telling you, you disarm people when you live it. You alienate them when you criticize them. I wanted to live it so they'd ask me a question and it has worked. Your personal integrity gives you the platform to somebody want to ask you a question. I really believe that's where all the evangelism is. I promise you, if you went downtown today and you start screaming everybody was going to hell, I doubt if you, one person will listen to anything you've got to say, and they might remember you, and if they see you, they'll probably drive down another block and go around you and make sure they never see you again. But if they watch your life under pressure at work, and your friends see that you don't switch sides and you have stability because you have stability inside you, you create a favorable opening to have a conversation with them. 
That's, to me, that's the biggest evangelism that you have. Now, I realize Reinhard Bonnke wins millions of people, but you're not in Africa and you're not Reinhard Bonnke. But I promise you this, because I understand principle, Reinhard Bonnke can do what I just said. He couldn't do that if he couldn't do that. You have to be a Christian first. See, we, we try to go out, but we, we actually need to learn what it is to be a Christian. And then we will have influence. If you want influence before your Christian character is formed, you're not going to be ineffective. Which we're talking about our purpose. And I said this last week because the men and I were talking about it. I, I think you find your purpose just by living and a godly life and doing what you're supposed to do. You kind of just grow into what you're supposed to do. Because I always say, an apple seed doesn't have to say, I'm going to be an apple tree. It might say it's going to be an apple tree, but it don't know what one looks like yet. The seed don't know what the tree looks like. It's just going to grow into one. Why? It's pre-programmed to grow into one. You are already got the DNA to become what God wants you to become and for you to grow into it. But you have to do it uh, with the Bible in its is your priority to actually reach it. Now you can manipulate it and they can take you out of office for adultery and fornication and stealing because everybody who gets up there without the character has trouble. Now they let them stay. I'm not going there. I'm not going there, Lord. I don't understand anything about all that, but that's okay. But you, you can go places by being good looking or smart or knowing how to talk to people that your character can't keep you. The goal is, do you have staying power? Do you, are you consistent enough that you can keep what you, God gave you because you are who you say you are with God? I think the victory in life is in all the simple stuff. Tread not to corn. Tread not to corn. I mean, it don't bother me. I, sweep, I swept sidewalks, clean toilets, paint, painted clean, painted my office when I worked for somebody else. Hosed a lot, washed cars. None of, I was on commission, never got paid for none of that stuff. Don't care. I, I, I really did get paid for all that stuff. You really know the truth? God paid me for all that. It was great. But I became what I wanted to be before I got to do it. And you learn by being a good wife and a good husband and a good dad and a good bill payer and a good neighbor and a, and a good church person and a good relational person. That's how you get there. If you go as you grow, you're not acting. And nothing is better than being yourself. Nothing, nothing. I would rather have people argue with me than be themselves and pretend they're making me happy. So we don't agree. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Let's go eat lunch. We'll work it out. Might not even agree. I don't know. You, maybe you know something I don't. Maybe I know something you don't. But... What's that got to do with our fellowship? We're supposed to see a disagreement makes your character grow. If you get everybody to agree with you, you'll never change. You know, I was thinking about all the people. I was thinking about the body of Christ today. Do you realize how different we all are? This, is, this church has a whole group of different people. I go to Philly. I was just in Philly. They got them all. Pick a nation. Pick a nation, and it's in their church. I love it because I love diversity. So for me, it's perfect for me. I, I like all the differences. I, I, I was wondering the other day, I said, why don't you, I'm talking to myself, Joe, why don't you preach the same sermon exactly like you did in the first one? I don't think I'm capable of it. That's probably the real problem. Because I don't think in performances I think in communication so whatever I got to do to communicate is what I'm going to do so you get it it's all about communication that's why religion is so hard to deal with because Jesus was a communicator and they were a ruling authority Jesus was the son of God he had all the authority he needed but he was a communicator and he broke it down and said a sower sows the word he never led from position he led from relationship it was obvious they knew, he knew what he's doing 
I mean, they'd walk up to him and say, we could tell you're a teacher sent from God, you know. That's what they knew it. But he never used that as any means of leadership. See, you know, if Jesus had to do, you know he had to be a Christian, right? (laughs) You realize he kept the law perfectly. He had to do it before he could tell you that you could. Oh, my dad, we could go home. We can go home right there. He had to do it before he heaped it on them. Many of us heap things on people that we don't have any victory over, and we wonder why they don't want to talk to us. It's true. You're going to love us. Be a Christian. Have some personal victory in your life as a Christian. And I promise you in Jesus' name, because I know God, He'll start opening doors for you to win souls. If I, if I said you better go win some souls, if you don't have it in you, how are you going to do it? Power only works in reality. So when you actually believe it, there's an anointing on your life that produces the opening. If you don't have it, you'll go out and say, ain't nobody listening to my I'm not doing that. They told us, cussed at me. But your genuine Christianity has an, what is the word Christian mean? Anointed one. You got to have the Christ like to have the anointing to be a Christian. That's why I always tell you, you know, I, I, this might be my gift though, so I better watch because the apostolic gift likes going out where nobody knows not, and there ain't nobody, ain't nobody, excuse me, English. It's okay, they communicate. I like going out where there's nobody and I've never been, and meeting new people and starting something. Even a fight if you have to, but start something. (laughs) In other words, you should make a difference, and it's because I actually believe the gospel. So I look, I'm sure the earth, I'm sure if I go in at one town today, somebody in there is right. Somebody somewhere got to want to hear something Someplace, Father, I thank you. You lead me to him today in Jesus' name. And then I see, you notice I'm full of anticipation and I'm smiling. And a, you know what? A smile will track somebody. A frown don't track everybody. If you have no victory over yourself, how are you going to smile? But when you got victory, you're just looking for something to do. You're looking for something to do. It creates an optimism in you. I slew the lion and I slew the bear and this uncircumcised Philistine is going to be as one of them. But if you haven't had any experiences in your private life with God, how are you going to have victory in the public? The qualifier was done when the brothers and nobody was there but the lion and the sheep. David was bad with God first before he got kill thousands outside of his life. He had to be discovered because when, when they come to have you, they realize he had an anointing. He played and saw that with full of demons could relax. That if you full of God, people that got demons are going to know you're different. You can't do it without the anointing. And to be anointed, you actually got to do it with God. To have an anointing, you actually got to believe it. I'll preach my notes some other day. You got to believe the gospel to have what the gospel says. Do you realize that? Do you realize what freedom I'm preaching this morning? I'm not preaching bondage. I'm preaching telling. I'm standing up here for forty-five minutes telling you to be yourself. And you know what? If you look bad. It's perfect because now God can fix it. But the whole time you're not being yourself, he can't get his hands on it because you haven't let go. As Lester said, another man's head is no place for your happiness. If you're trying to perform to get somebody to like you, that's a prison if I've ever heard of one. 
You know, I never, this, remember now, I'm going to go back to my own life for a minute. You know, that's why I said I've been written off so much I can be myself. I hate to say it, I was probably the biggest unfulfilled expectation you ever seen from the time I was born until I was 20 years old. Failed everything you could fail. I told you, my graduation card said we didn't think you'd make it. My own family, that's what the card said. Little did I know that, God, see, here, see, when you get some history, you can look back. Little did I know that God was, doing, was allowing that all along to make a certain kind of man that don't have to live with all the accolades to do right. See, you, all them people that are trying to, you're trying to get their approval, they're stealing your destiny. Be yourself so God can change you into a God man or a God woman and you'll be fine. But you have to be willing to put it out there and look bad while he's fixing it. I didn't tell you go be based on purpose. I am just telling you, until you can be yourself, you might not know what's wrong with you. Oh, man. If you can't be yourself, you don't even know what you need. You're so busy performing, you don't even know what you don't know. But when you become yourself, you can say, I can't do that. Because your pride isn't keeping you from wanting to know. Or your low self-esteem, because if you could admit you can't do that, you hate yourself because you can't, you feel like you're worthless, but you didn't know who you are and what you got because you're so busy looking at what you're not. You don't know what you got. You're a treasure of, of value. You're full of God when you got born again. And when he fashioned you in the womb, he knew exactly what he gave you. But if you're trying to be somebody else, you won't discover yourself. I'm preaching freedom. I, it might sound like I'm preaching harsh, but I like this harsh stuff. It gets me out. You get me out. Get me out. Don't leave me in jail. You got to be you. I had a guy work for me, and he said that. He said, you know, this is the only place I've ever been where I can be myself. You got to, can people be their self around you? I know they're going to be accepted. That's, that's the big question. You want to win souls? Do you realize they might have to tell you? They had, they've been married 10 years, slept with three women, and got somebody pregnant and had an abortion. Now, do you want to get them saved? Because they got to confess their sin before they get saved. Who are they going to tell? If you happen to be the guy they're telling, do you have enough character to know all them evil things about somebody? And hug them and say, I'm so sorry about your life, but God can help you with that. You've got to be able to know all that stuff and maintain your Christian character instead of think evil of them because love is what will get that job done. I, I had all that in my notes, but some of it we're not going to get there. But if you look at Corinthians, you know, 12, it lists the gifts. For, it lists the gifts, you know, tongues, turp, taste tongues, all those things. Then it goes to the governmental gifts, you know, apostles first and gift of government and, and miracles. But the next chapter, he says, let me tell you a more excellent way. And love is the one. He said, I just listed all the power gifts. I just listed all the office gifts. But let me tell you what really works. You need this, but let me tell you where the power is. It's in love. Love can know things about people and still love them. Those of you who got some wayward kids, try to work that out. Love them back. Don't fix them back. Love will give you the voice that they can hear. And if the damage is real high, you're going to have to love them a while. Those of you who have family members that you really are wanting to get back, God's given you an avenue this morning of how to reach them. You're going to have to put up with all the stuff you hate about them to love them so you have a voice. You never know, you might have caused some of it yourself, so you should probably watch out anyhow. Let's stand to our feet. I hope this helped you this morning. I mean that too. I'm not just saying that. I mean that. I mean it with my whole heart.
that I hope you got a couple nuggets. You know, if I talk for 45 minutes and you only got one line that's going to change your life, I would be so happy. You could say, Apostle, you talk crazy for 45 minutes, but you said this one thing. One thing that changed my life. One thing. One word from God can change your life. Father, I thank you this morning from the, for the privilege of letting me talk, allowing me to communicate with your heart. Father, I thank you those words are living and they go down in the inward parts of our heart and they take root and they grow as plant. They grow a victory. They grow a relationship. They grow a salvation. I thank you, God, that the words that drop down in, let them cultivate them, let them water them, let them pour faith on them by worship. May it water them with the word that they will grow into exactly what you made them to be. I thank you for the freedom in here, God. Make this a place where people can be themselves even if they're not lovely and we got enough love for them to get healed up in this house, in the name of Jesus. Father, I speak health to all of our bodies. Organs working right, all, all organs working, pancreases, colons, arteries, livers, kidneys. I thank you, Father, in your great mercy, while you're conveying to them like you did me with my dream, you kept me alive till you taught me what I didn't know. You're so good, God. You, you give us time to get better so we don't get bad. Thank you, God, this morning. You're so gracious and merciful. You will keep us all around till we get our mind renewed in that area and we learn about the grace of God to change. We love you, we honor you, and we bless you this morning on purpose, with our mouths, with our heart, with our bodies, in the name of Jesus. And everybody said... Amen and amen. Thank you for letting me talk to you.